Hey everybody, welcome back to the Punch Bomb Blender live stream. <laughs> Sorry, I've been absent lately. I've been sick. I'm still sick. I have mono, so I don't know how long I'm going to be going today. I'm just exhausted 24-7, but there's still work that needs to be done. I need to animate the boss. I've got a few animations in place. So, I guess we'll just get started. The animations we need today are a left punch, a laser sweep using his eyes, and then uh, cannon fire recoil for when he shoots from the shoulder cannons. Uh, maybe one for each shoulder, and then I can string them together in Unreal to make something that looks cool. So I guess we'll start with the laser sweep, because that seems fun. And right now I'm at I made a new animation, and this is the last frame of the idle animation. So what we're going to do is go to the rest position, and we're going to add two cylinders to represent the lasers that he's going to sweep across the field coming from his eyes, which these don't need to be super big. Maybe just like that, big enough that we can see them and duck under them. And these aren't going to actually be used in the game. These are just for reference so we get the animation right. And then I'll add lasers when I put them in the game. Oh, something like that that the player will have to duck under. And then, uh, we'll go to our second bone layer, because we have all these hidden bones apart from the controls, and we'll parent these to the head bone. So now, if we go out of rest position, we can see where the lasers are pointed. Which, if we put our player in the center there, it's not even close to low enough to have the duck under, so we'll work on that. So first things first, um, in animation, anticipation is always very important. Also, we can go ahead and delete all these frames for these bones that we're not using anymore. Turn off that layer. So we'll go forward. We can always change the timing of this. We'll go forward about 20 frames and we'll make him get prepared for the attack. Which will... I guess he'll like lean back a little bit. Maybe he'll look up to the left. Like he's just really getting ready to do something. push the arms up here. And maybe he'll coil his hands into a fist. So I can go ahead and turn on screencast keys. Don't know how useful it will be for this particular instance. But close enough. I mean because whatever rig you're working with is going to be different than this rig, so... Just uh, do your thing. Put the hands into a fist like he's really getting ready to do something. Maybe have this one, but don't have it quite as high, just because we don't want everything to be symmetric. Uh, symmetry in animation is... I'm not an animator, by the way, but symmetry in animation is, like, the death of good animation. I'll go ahead and put the thumb in. And maybe rotate it down some. And a lot of people like to work with auto key on. Um, I do not. I always end up screwing up my animations if I have auto key on. Uh, my personal recommendation is work without it and just be weary. We can rotate the shoulders down a little bit, but rotate these shoulder pads up some to prevent collision. Because mesh intersection can ruin the effect. We 
which I added bones um, between last stream and now I've added bones here that animate these tubes, uh, which is nice, just so we have some shoulder pad control. Because we don't want the shoulders to look super stiff. And up here we can see what it'll look like from a perspective a little bit further behind the player. Maybe we will rotate him a little bit, so we'll grab these, we'll grab the waist, and then we'll rotate around the active element. Like he's really getting ready to sort of shoot us with something. we can rotate this around to sort of bring the elbows out further, and you'll notice the shoulders are starting to intersect again. Which, uh, this rig isn't the best, because I'm not much of a rigger either, but uh, we'll make it work. It's all about just finding that happy medium. Uh, so now he sort of gets ready, which that seems a bit fast to me, so we'll add 10 frames to it. And we'll add some overlap and stuff so the fists don't come up at the exact same time after we get all the poses down. Uh, step one is get the general poses down, step two will be to tweak it, clean it up, and polish it. And there are like a trillion steps in between for making good animation, but... Anyway, in the game, this is when the eyes will get really bright red. Then we have to figure out how to get him low enough so the lasers sweep low enough to cut the player's head off. Let's come forward, like, maybe 20 frames. I remember, the player area, this is about two meters, so... That's what we really need to worry about. Set the rotations on the waist and him looking back. And we're probably gonna have to move him down some. Uh, we'll experiment a little bit here. Somewhere around there seems like a good place for the player to have to duck under. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to stream just because I feel like absolute garbage. Um, after he's sort of started firing, let's say his hands can come back. Which we might ch decide to change this later. set the rotations on these. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. I'm paying attention up here as well, because in general this is what the player is going to see, just more of the robot is obstructed. And then we can reset the shoulder rotations so they're not rotated down quite so far. Uh, 
And we could even bring the hands down and rotate the shoulders up, probably. Uh, so after it gets to this pose, we're probably going to need to add, definitely going to need to add an in-between pose here so it doesn't look so unnatural. Um, but after it gets to this pose, we'll take a few seconds. So 24. Let's take like 4 seconds. So we'll take 96 frames. Um, let's see, 50 plus 96 is 146. And we'll just rotate them slowly across the field. So I get a good idea of where the laser is going to end up. And we can always speed this up later or make variations of it that are different speeds. Let's see if we can get the laser low enough though. Um, to where we don't have to bring him down so far, because that's frustrating. It just doesn't look good. Yeah, we can try it. It's going to take some playtesting and then probably some tweaking. But for the purpose of now... Uh, okay, so then we can... Come over here, delete these frames, and re-rotate them. So the player will have to duck under those lasers. How can we make this look good though? Uh, we're going to want to pause to give him a second to charge up up there. So we'll grab all of these frames. Move them over about 15, and then we'll move these over about 15. And then we'll do some keep alive here. So we'll rotate him back a little bit more, just a little bit to keep him alive. Move the hands a little bit. I think uh, what we're going to want to do for these poses is rotate the head up a little bit so he's not having mesh collisions here. And then rotate the overall body down some. And we'll have it in the game, rather than only colliding with the head, we'll say the player actually has to duck under the lasers or else they'll get hit.
I think that's a fair compromise. This is a six foot two person. Most people are shorter, so we can probably even take him. Let's see. Um, 1.87 meters to feet is 6.13 feet. So let's see the average person height. About five foot ten. Um, so we'll say five foot ten meters. It's one point seven seven eight. And we'll copy the scale around everything. Okay, so average human height still collides with them. They still have to duck under it. Uh, we might even bring this down a little bit. So they have to really duck. Delete those keyframes again, because this is an easy enough thing to do to just rotate this, and that'll keep our torso correct. I don't know if that's slow enough, that's going to take playtesting. And then we can animate the lasers to get a good idea. So let's go to this frame. This frame. We'll insert scale keyframes. Jump back here. Scale these so they don't exist yet, like all the way into the eyes. Can even have those come out a little bit later. And more instantaneous anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we missed one of them. I don't know how long I can stream today, I really feel bad. Um, let's keep going, just push through it. So when he's about center way, that's too easy to duck under. So we're going to rotate him down a little bit further. Alright, so then we need to prevent the fists from colliding, so we're going to add a couple in-between frames here. And before we do that, we're going to really update this pose. Because I don't think we need... the hands to be in fists anymore. That's more of like, uh, I'm getting ready to murder you kind of thing. Let's 
just prevent it from colliding with that wheel right there. sort of bring these out like he's really putting effort into it. something like that. The player is not going to be able to see the hands. They're below the platform. Um, this is just for my own sanity. And then we can probably rotate these down a little bit and up this way some. For anybody watching that's just joining, I apologize that I sound like garbage. I am sick with mono and it's not fun. Alright, so then we can take the hands and all the fingers and we can delete these frames and then duplicate these frames. Which eventually will go into the graph editor and really clean things up, but for now this is sufficient. And just because I like to keep everything clean and in the same poses when I'm working on things at first, we'll go ahead and duplicate the frames across. Um, having actual key poses like this um, makes working out the animation a lot easier, in my opinion. Uh, we'll go ahead and delete all these keys. Duplicate these across. And then we'll add an in-between pose. Right here, where the hands are going through. just to prevent any sort of mesh collision. And we can also maybe add a little bit of overlapping action here so, the, so it feels like these are moving quickly and the hands are dragging behind. And then this pose, I feel like we can even move these out further. We only care about the silhouette of the arms here. We're never going to see the hands in the game. Alright, so now that the forearms have been updated, we'll delete those keys again. We'll just leave them deleted for the time being, and then we'll duplicate them across later. Or, uh, we can even animate them a little bit. Let's say they uh, move further back as he's stripping across the field.
Uh, maybe this one will come further forward since his torso is rotating around. But we have to be careful not to collide with that wheel. we can rotate this fist up a little bit more, like he's really getting ready. And as he's coming down, I think we really need to emphasize this. There will be a little bit of mesh collision there, but I don't think it will be noticeable from the perspective of the player. testing the animation, I'm only looking up here, because um, the player's never going to see it from this angle. Let's make these bright red, just so we know. And then we'll take this fist and we will have it keep continue its animation up rather than stopping there. And then we'll even rotate it up a little bit. I think we'll even extend this section a little bit more. We'll make it 20 frames instead of 15. This looks awkward, this whole section right here. I think what we need to do, maybe bring these up and then rotate the elbows around a little bit. I'm testing this in my chair, so it'll cut me some slack. to rotate these around a bit more. And then we can delete this in between and we'll redo it later. Okay, so that is, the in-between is super awkward, but we have to prevent that collision, so we need to figure out a good way to do that. Essentially, we don't want the arms ending up behind the wheel. They need to always be far enough out to where they're not gonna collide when we make the in-between, so it doesn't look like he's putting his arms out and then back in.
then if we come in and do an in between let's uh copy this frame and copy this frame and then we'll manually do the in-between here and then we can move this in we also want it to move in a nice arc so we don't want it to just linearly interpolate and then bring these out so there's some drag and then we can go into the graph editor and smooth it out oh, come in here Notice how it goes, how the X doesn't stay consistent in a line, it just goes, it dips and then goes back up. So we'll turn off everything except locations. And then we'll smooth this out. Um, this one, you'll notice the handles rotated a little bit funny. It's uh, causing like a weird kink. Um, Z location, we can smooth that out a little bit, I think. Then from here to there, we're going to want to duplicate the hand frames. Maybe move them back a bit over the course. And that means we're also going to have to rotate these guys up a little bit. Which I think what we can do with the shoulder pads is the same thing and eliminate the middle frame. And that'll give it a much smoother motion. Feels like it's really far out. And it would be nice to get the elbow going the other direction. Uh, working with a rig that's set up like this with IK, um, especially with robot joints, is uh, really difficult to get the exact poses you want. looks like garbage. Let's see, I'm gonna play it a few times. I think what we're gonna wanna do is ease a little bit. So he's up here. I think we want to favor 
the first frame so it eases a bit more. And then we can probably even go into the dope sheet. Grab all these frames to make it favor this transition to this transition more than it does this transition to this transition. Uh, give it five extra frames. I still don't like... Okay, so... Oh shit, he's also... Um, colliding with the platform. That's a big problem. So we'll come here. We'll insert frames on everything. And then we'll come over here and we'll do another in-between to prevent this. You might want to do in the graph editor to make sure things stay smooth. It still feels like it's going out and then in again. Um, that's, uh... If I'm doing the motions myself, which you can't see, so let's say I'm, I'm charging up and then swing my hands back, they're gonna be out further on the X on the... Yeah, I think it's this right here. We're gonna want to bring up It was dipping, it was going up and then coming back down. We can probably bring it in all together. Let's see here too. Bring this one in a little bit. So when he sweeps the lasers across the field, the player has to duck under them. I think four seconds is enough time to really react, especially since he has this giant prep phase where he brings his arms up, charges up his eyes, and then sweeps across. And then all the way at the end here, if we flip between frames, I think we're going to want to move this forward. And then, finally, after he sweeps across, we want to put him back into his uh, the beginning of the idle pose. So for that, we'll save. Uh, we'll go back to the dope sheet. Um, fun tip: if you're oh shit, if you're not currently using an animation, and uh, by default it will go away if you close the document and reopen it. Um, since it's not being, since it's an unused data block, Blender's just like, oh, I'll scrap it. Uh, so if you're not using it currently, you can hit this little F key and it'll save it even if you close it, which is how I'm saving multiple animations like this. So we go back to our idle and then we will copy the first frame go back to eye lasers I'm all the way here to the end maybe go forward like 20 frames not even close to enough frames And then these guys, the lasers, which again are just for reference, these are not the lasers that are going to be used in the game. We'll scale those back down.
I don't know why the keyframes for him aren't showing up. We'll just... It's a little bit weird. Uh, so, lasers burst out, soups across the field. You have to duck under them. And then he goes back to idle. Not bad for like 40 minutes work. I want this fist to come up first. So we'll come in and see what's going on there. So we'll duplicate this frame across. And then we'll also do some keep alive on it. And then this one, we'll delete that frame. And then just prevent it from colliding. And he sweeps across. <laughs> Comes from idle. Reaches up. Maybe we'll favor the other pose. So we'll insert a keyframe there. And move it back to here just so it's more like keep alive rather than finishing the pose. I think that looks alright. Right here, the elbow is bending, starting to bend, so we want to prevent that. And let's come to here, and we'll bring this guy forward even more. And you... Delete the in-between frame on him. So it's more subtle. And then this shoulder pad overall can come down. I think that's uh, not bad. So we will revisit that one later. 
We have our this punch. I'm um, gonna put the lasers um, on one of these layers right here. Which, in the game, this feels like it's coming at you much faster. It, I, I can't have it come any faster than that, just because the player needs time to react. Since you're going to have to punch the fists back at the robot, you're going to hit it, it's going to bounce back, hit it again, and then it'll actually bounce back. Like, and then it'll actually, actually bounce back. So I need to figure out how to mirror poses and then do a little bit of googling. way based on my quick Google search. Oh, let's do a test. We will add a new one. We'll call this RB underscore punch right. We'll save it. Uh, so if I hit Control M X, it literally mirrors it and scales everything on the x-axis. We might just have to reanimate the punch for the other side. Yeah, okay, so that literally scales it. I could have sworn there was an easy way to mirror. Anybody in the chat knows how to mirror poses in Blender, that would be helpful. Because right now I am desperately... Oh. Let's see if this works. So, copy. So if we copy and then we control shift V, it mirrors it. Perfect. So we just have to come in here, do that for all the frames and we have our other side punch. So we can copy, control shift V. Oh wait, of course we don't want to do that for the first pose. We do want to do it right here, though.
And let's see how much this screws everything up. He's behaving this way. Let me go see what's happening. So we'll come back over here. We'll go to our punch left. We'll make a new one. Punch right dot zero zero one. We'll rename punch right to bad, and then we'll come back here. Get rid of the dot zero zero one, and <laughs> just flip the player upside down. Sorry, I was paying attention to comments. I was looking at Google. All right, so on all these uh, keyframes that aren't a whole pose, we're just going to insert keyframes for everything. And then when we flip stuff, it should work. Okay, so now we should be able to flip each of these. and it should work. And then we want this pose to be the same. All right, so now I have our uh, right punch and a left punch. So, on our notepad sheet here, we can say done for the laser sweep and the punch, which this is actually our right punch. And we have to do a cannon fire recoil. So that one, I'm struggling to figure out the best way to handle that because um, in the animation blueprint and Unreal, we're gonna want to be able to chain together as many recoils as we possibly uh, as we want at the time. It'll vary every time he fires. It'll be like a random number of bombs that he shoots. Thinking if we do a uh, left recoil and a right recoil. That'll be enough. So we'll go back to our idle. Oh, we'll go to our bad punch and unsave that. Come to our idle. Come to the last frame. We'll make a new animation, rb underscore recoil underscore, we'll start with the left, why not? Which, from his perspective, this is the left. Our right is his left, so we'll do that. We'll delete all the other frames. Bring this back to frame one. And then we'll just do like a 
really sharp recoil. Which I'm, I guess, maybe like 10 frames. Which actually comes out to 11 because we're starting at 1. So we'll say his waist will rotate a little bit, his shoulder will rotate back, we'll rotate this back a little bit, that is a pretty weak recoil, we can probably get away with less frames than that. and make it stronger, add some real oomph to the cannons. And we're gonna have to go into the graph editor for this one. And then we'll grab the idle pose at the beginning. Copy it, come back to our recoil, paste it. Uh oh, didn't copy everything. copying all the frames. Let's uh, use the actual copy button. There we go. And we're going to want to start out really sharp. And then ease in, and then ease back to the original. And that's not that hard to do in the graph editor. You just come here, select everything, zoom in on it, get rid of the easing for the first frame, ease these a bit more. And then give this a few more frames. But you're missing some frames from moving. Probably because you have channels turned off in the graph editor. So we'll fix that. So many. Which means we can bring these over a little bit more and really use into that top arc. So, what are we like from here? Then we can take this and move over probably even more. And you can ignore where the cannons are pointing because I'm going to put some logic into those in Unreal, so they're always pointing at the player.
Um, that puts us right at about an hour. I'm sick with mono. I do not feel good at all. So I think I'm going to call it quits for streaming for today. I just wanted to hop in and get some stuff done. Uh, maybe show you all a little bit of animation work, so hopefully people found it useful. If not, oh well. Hope you all have a great day, though. Um, peace out for now.